Welcome, everyone. We'll start our meeting. We have all the trustees here. Um, is there any oral communications? Motion to approve. I'll second. Sorry. <laughs> I'll second. I'll go ahead and open the voting. Okay, approved 5-0. Thank you. Okay, we'll move on to item number uh, two, building for library infrastructure grant project. We'll first hear from a presentation from Ed Vasquez, project manager for the city, and then we'll move on to Robert if he's here by then, um, and then off to Reno, uh, our library director, and then uh, we'll open it for the board of trustees. Um, welcome, Ed. Thank you for being here today. Good, ap good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Ed Vasquez. I'm the project manager for the Library Infrastructure Improvement Grant. Um, I work with the Capital Improvements Department, Engineering Department with the City of Escondido. Um, Robert is going to be here. I think he was running a little bit late, but we can move into the presentation and go from there. Um, I understand there might be a number of questions. Um, in advance, I apologize if I can't answer them, but I'll write down every question that's provided or if it be sent to me and then we'll provide a response as soon as we're able to. Um, so moving forward, um, this was a state grant program uh, provided to all cities. Um, these are one-time funds that are available to each city with a maximum of 10 million that could be obtained by each city through the grant funding program. Um, the city of Escondido did receive the maximum allowed dollar amount, which is a 10 million, um, and there is no matching contribution to that, so meaning that we do not have to dollar for dollar um, spend what they're providing us. Uh, this is strictly 10 million that goes to the infrastructure of the building um, in the project. Um, the grant does include for 30% soft costs, as you can see, um, these costs do include a design, development, construction, and project management of the project. Um, these are some of these funds have already been used for um, design services, construction, and project management services that are outside of the city's project manager. So we do have a construction consultant and a design consultant firm on hand, which uh, we're working closely with right now um, to get these funds to the point where we can go to build and bid. Um, the funds uh, must be expanded by March 31st, 2026. So. Um, we should have all invoices by that time, so we're, we're pushing the time crunch here, as you can see, um, and that's given that this might be a nine to 12 month uh, construction process. Uh, 12 months being probably worst case scenario, but we're looking at at least nine, nine months on that. Um, there is a list of unallowable costs. Uh, we'll go over that in slide four. Um, the main use of the funds is supposed to be for infrastructure deficiencies. Um, and again, we'll go into the next couple of slides with that. Um, grant priorities, uh, life safety and critical maintenance and infrastructure improvements. Um, this kind of gives you a breakdown of what the grant from the state of California, what they like to see, uh, mechanical, electrical, plumbing, uh, roof structure, uh, one of the main components, ADA compliance, also any retrofit that would be structural to the building uh, if it doesn't meet seismic as well for wave retrofitting would be applied or used for this grant. Um, grant restrictions, items that are not covered. Um, you can see these are a lot of items that would be considered kind of nice to have. Uh, furniture, fixing, uh, furnishing the fixing, uh, including accessible furniture, improvements to facilities that do not qualify as public library outlets. Um, you can see that this is a uh, 
pretty extensive list. I, I think that we did provide two handouts that show everything. Um, some of the critical items in here that are concerning to us that we need to get uh, funding for and work on are going to be the ADA compliance outside the building. Um, so right now we are deficient in ADA path of travel from the parking lots, the sidewalks to the front door of the library, and those are items that are not funded by the library infrastructure project. ADA inside is, but ADA outside is not. Um, moving forward, uh, getting into the design estimate. Uh, again, this is a very high overview of everything, but where we're at right now with our budget, um, from the 10 million, we're budgeting, or we are at 7.5 million, where the expenses that you can see here, um, these things are quickly adding up. Um, the, one of the biggest ones would be where you see the $1 million um, dollar amount there. Um, also the built-in stacks are, that the only way that we can incorporate the stacks as funding that would be covered is these items has, have to become part of the building. So they are bolted in, they become non-movable, um, can't be relocated, so that's kind of a big, big item as well. Uh, but you can see how quickly this is adding up. Uh, at the bottom, plumbing, HVAC, electrical are also big components of this uh, cost estimate. Uh, part of our design estimate is looking at what's unallowable that is not covered by the grant. Um, so furniture, furniture, furnishings, and equipment. Um, Outside ADA path of travel, uh, temporary facility, moving and relocation is not covered. Um, electronics, computers, card readers, audiovisual equipment not covered. Uh, second floor, uh, same thing, furniture and equipment. Also second floor carpet. Um, when the grant was submitted for approval, we had to be specific as to what we were working on. Um, most of the, the application that was submitted was to cover the first floor improvements. So that's why you will see that the second floor is kind of excluded from this, um, except for the bathrooms that are part of the ADA compliance. Um, this is a really high level overview of the existing floor plan. The items you see that are highlighted with different colors is kind of where you'll see the biggest changes on the first floor. Um, this kind of tells you what that's going to become and you kind of see a little bit of rearrangement of stacks and partitions, walls, electrical, um, everything that's involved with these items, uh, friend's shop, activity, market space, uh, teen space, study room, quiet room. Uh, that's it for the presentation. Um, I don't know if there's any questions that I can answer. Thank you, Ed. Before we move on to questions, I think that we want to hear um, reports and updates maybe from Robert and Reno, and then we would like to move forward with having Trustee Schwab and Trustee Clemens give us a, a little bit of background of their meeting with meeting with you uh, last month. Sure. So, Robert, do you have anything to add to the, to the updates? Thank you. Welcome. Welcome, Robert. <laughs> uh, my apologies. I was uh, running very late today. Um, the, uh, the one uh, update I could probably provide to you um, that was not uh, provided through this particular presentation is that uh, Reno, myself, um, his team, and members of my team have started exploring uh, opportunities for what do we do with the collection and what do we do during this period in which the library is closed down. So we've just started that process, being able to look at potential locations, uh, transitions, and all that kind of stuff. So I don't have a really specific update for you, but we are in the process of doing that now once we're able to identify how long the closure is actually going to take place, because it's now my understanding that it is going to be a significant closure, and we want to make sure that we maintain the services of the library as much as possible uh, during that period of time. Okay, do you know the estimated time frame of the closure? Uh, right now, what I heard was estimates can range anywhere from six months to approximately a year. We're hoping not, but it, it is uh, looking at a pretty extensive closure at this point. 
And that's starting in March? Uh, I, I don't know specifically when that will be. Okay. And, um, okay, thank, thank you for your update. Um, Reno, is there anything you would like to add to this presentation? There we go. So, for the record, we know Lava, every director. Uh, <laughs> overall, what I want to mention that hasn't been mentioned is that the two consulting companies have been very open to suggestions as far as the layout that you see here. A lot of these plans were brought up and recommended by the library staff and both the city and the two consultant companies have been very willing to make adjustments when able to. Um, what wasn't covered here is that in the original grant application, uh, a lot of the plans that we see here for enhancements to the public side were mentioned, but were not the priority. The priority is the infrastructure, but we did try to make as many changes as we could within the understanding that there is a limited budget and the priority is the infrastructure. Um, we've been so far trying to address needs on the second floor through outside grants. You've heard about some of those in other presentations and in my updates. Um, beyond that, we are very optimistic, having now seen several of the potential locations that the city is offering as possible solutions for where we could continue service. Um, both the ones we've seen so far have potential and could be done. Um, to continue some form of library services. Um, high on our priority list is continuing our children's and family activities since those are very popular and serve a very needed portion of our community. Um, beyond that, and all the plans are currently in the drafting stage, we're really just starting to begin because until recently we hadn't really had an idea of what options were available. So it was hard to plan without knowing where we could be. Uh, but now that we have some viable options, it's giving us some concrete space ideas and limitations as to what can be offered where and with how many staff. Um, we're working under the assumption that we'll retain all staff uh, currently. But again, it's going to depend on whatever we find is doable. Uh, I'm still very optimistic we'll be able to. But things happen, and it's really not on me to decide. Um, beyond that, the, the goals of the spaces were to answer the requests that we were going through the strategic planning process that happened a few years ago. So we did look at that when making recommendations. And a lot of what you see in this plan we have on the screen is a result of that. Uh, so for example, we continue to get requests for quiet study rooms and study spaces. In the plan, you'll see that we would close quiet area, so that will be a completely quiet zone right outside that. It's outside of the grant, but we are hoping to get study pods for one or two people, maybe one that's up to four people, it really depends again on how much funding we can find. Uh, because the friends, and you can see here, the friends support is important to us, um, the friend shop was moved and expanded in this plan. Uh, to make room for two built-in study rooms uh, that are seen there, in addition to additional restrooms that can be viewed there and that blue. Um, the activity and maker space, a little correction, um, in the lower right corner, we're hoping that will be a nice new public programming and activity space to supplement what is available in the shrinking room on the second floor, which is much larger. So this will be great for 10, 20 people classes, most likely in the 10 to 15 range. Um, and beyond that, we also have some changes in the upper right, the teen space. It was very important that our teens have their own space to be able to enjoy both each other's company and not feel like they're being you know, surrounded by adults or feeling like they're being a nuisance. We want them to feel comfortable in the library, so we did want to go into space for that. Um, because of that, we have had to move library staff in this plan, and so a lot of our staff will now be in new offices or with new neighbors in the back of the house. Um, like I said, the second floor was outside of the scope of the grant, um, but if 
there is funding, or if we can find funding, we are suggesting that we at least change carpeting and some of the other changes that we're looking at there. Or in furniture, for example, to give the whole library a feeling of being, I'm not gonna say new, but the closest thing to being new that we can make it. So that way people feel that those nine to 12 months of being without their usual library, their home library, is worthwhile. Can I ask a quick question? Um, are there any options still available where the library remains open and the second floor is available and maybe the first floor is closed? So unfortunately, we've discussed that and for the project to move with the schedule that's gonna move forward and be completed as soon as possible, we have to close the, the library down because we have to empty the building. So uh, and remove of asbestos and the plumbing will be gone, HVAC will be gone. Um, it, it really won't be a functioning building if, if, you know, if, we, uh, if, we, don't, if we don't do that. So uh, the best way to do this is to empty the building, uh, remove all the books, remove all the furniture, and uh, allow the contractor to come in there and demo and have full, you know, full range of motion to do anything they need to do at any time. So. Got it. And, and then with the second floor and the mention of carpet specifically, um, if there wasn't carpet and it was just a floor, would that be considered part of the building? It is part of the building. However, the grant, the way it was submitted, the second floor was not part of that uh, original application. So. Understood. Thank you. OK, thank you, Reno. And then finally, uh, Trustee Schwab and Trustee Clements had a meeting. And, and could you give us an update on that? Aaron, sh should I just read them to the uh, meeting report? Okay, uh, the attendees were Joe Gillard, Director of Public Works, Robert Rose, uh, and Ed Vasquez, both of whom are here today. And from the trustees, uh, Carolyn and myself. And I'll just read this. As we discuss the funded and unfunded items, schedule, and how to continue library services during the building construction, and the role of LS and S, it became clear that generally we were all of the same mind. At the upcoming presentation of this project by City at the September Library Trustee Meeting, Library Foundation and Friends of the Library will be invited to attend. We'll schedule a workshop meeting later in the month where we can all work together to identify which unfunded items as identified, well, they're identified on this piece of paper, uh, uh, could be covered by uh, donations. The bid package will be ready for issue in December with responses requested within 60 days. By December, we'll know more accurately the schedule of the construction time frame. We talked about being ready to address a significant building closure time of several months, probably starting in May or June of 2025. This project involves major changes to restrooms, shelving, employee work areas, plumbing, HVAC, electrical, windows, roof, etc. Uh, Robert Rhodes will ask LSNS to develop a plan for providing as many library services as reasonably feasible during the building shutdown. Upon acceptance of the plan, the city can flesh out the logistics, identifying properties that can be utilized and the associated costs. Uh, library Board of Trustees will, help, will consider helping with these costs if feasible. Robert also voiced that at least the majority of uh, the library staff should be kept during the building shutdown. Carolyn and I completely agree. Uh, trustees will be asked to vote on a recommendation to City that the entire EPL staff, now funded with ARPA grant money, be kept intact to ensure the best possible service during the building shutdown and to enable a smooth reopening. Going forward, the City will provide a res renovation update at the monthly uh, trustee meetings. Okay, and then I have a uh, summary of Unfunded items. This included the ADA modifications to the parking lot and entry, which um, uh, Joe estimated at 125,000. Electronics, which I guess primarily is um, the key card entry that employees would use going back and forth in the building. And the temporary relocation of the library, which is still TBD, as, as Robert uh, said earlier. Uh, Joe uh, said that uh, 
modifications to the parking lot to bring it up to ADA standards, which in other words, we could have a building that's ADA standards, but we can't get into it because the parking lot's <laughs> up to, and the entryway are not up to ADA standards. Uh, so that uh, he indicated that that, that that and the electronics are, are probably something that the city would have to take care of. Uh, the first floor, um, unfunded items, we have movable, movable shelving, which is shelving that's probably, what, four foot high now? Yes. Okay. Uh, for holds and new additions, uh, $30,000. New furniture for the entire first floor, $150,000. And the five, well, we have we have we have a number for five study pods at fifteen thousand each, seventy-five thousand. Uh, the second floor own room, just the children's room only, not not the, any other part of it, uh, including not not the uh, turn team room or anything else. Just the children's area. Um, we're looking at a new service deck desk, and uh, the costs range from. Eight to twenty thousand dollars, but we know thinks so you can find a good one that'll that'll suffice for about ten thousand. Uh, having a tween room, probably partitions and furniture, eighteen to twenty thousand, and new carpet. Um, Ed, was that carpet quote just for the children's area, the hundred four thousand? No, that was for that. All right, that was for the entire second floor. Okay, um, could you give us a number that's just for the children's area? Sure, we can look into that. Okay. And so I'm guessing that would cut this probably in half for new carpet, if not more, but I don't know. Um, so there's still things that needed to happen. Let's see what else. There may be more I such items identified in the next two months as uh, the final plans are uh, developed and the cost estimates for those final plans are uh, looked at. So that was basically it. I'll just uh, add a, uh, just a couple of things, uh, I think, for the board and for everyone present. Um, I think it's extremely important to understand the nuance associated with the outside ADA path of travel. We can't open the library unless we have that. So um, unless we get secure the funding from the city, the library will remain closed. Is that right, Ed? Correct. Yes. yes correct. Okay, so I, I think that's extremely important, right? Um, the other things that I want to remind everybody of is economy of scale. So if we are to proceed, right, with some of these extras, it's in our best interest from a cost perspective to do it up front. Um, and at the same time that we're going out for the bids for um, the actual construction, uh, because you know, six months, 12 months from now, uh, it will be more expensive due to the time value of money. So um, just makes the most sense to invest the most at the beginning um, so that we don't have the extra cost down the road. Um, and then just a, a quick question to add. We will be pursuing quotes and asking the individual contractors to bid each of these, correct? So this will go out to bid as a complete bid package mm -hmm. from contractors. And to answer part of your uh, comments and questions right now, uh, for the items that you see listed on your screen right now, we're going to do a bid alternate item, which, um, with understanding that we don't have the funding for them, but the contractors can provide a price up front, which we, if we do have the funding, then we can, when we go to award the contract, we can award item one, item two, item three, whatever we can. So we'll have the dollar amounts already, so we won't have to go back out to bid again. So that, that's very good. Um, I think. The um, main kind of uh, things that are still up in the air is that these are all estimates, right? We won't know the actual cost until January. Um, so there could be a lot of fluctuation. I just want everybody to realize that. Um, and then the schedule too. So we won't have a, a definitized schedule. We probably will have more of an idea of what it's going to be in December, but we would know the schedule um, as the contractor bids it. So that would be February where we kind of have it locked down. That is correct. We won't have final numbers um, in a, probably, I would say, another 60 days when we dial in everything. No more changes. We're moving forward with the plans. Everything's been agreed to um, and the schedule as well. However, the schedule, part of the bid package is going to be 
uh, this is gonna be a nine month contract or a 12 month contract that the contractor would have to perform per the specifications of a bid contract. So. And then, um, Ed, just could you explain what would happen if we're not finished by March 31st of 2026? So typically the way it's set up is there's liquidated damages okay. um, that are written into the contract. The contractor has to abide by or they start paying liquidated damages. Um, we hope that's not the case. Um, we typically tend to never go that route. Um, they understand that, um, and that's usually a question that's asked during the bid process. If the contractors are experts in doing the uh, building and the construction say, hey, you guys are only giving us nine months and this is realistically a 12 month you know, project, uh, we'll look at it, see how many people are actually asking that question and then if we feel we have to revise the contract to say, okay, 12 months, then we'll do that at that time. Okay, thank you. Uh, just uh, one of the things Reno brought up earlier, uh, um, uh, two steps down from that, uh, you, you mentioned that, uh, and we've talked before about keeping all, all these library programs going um, during the shutdown. Um, if I'm not mistaken, the programs are primarily funded by Friends of the Library. So um, Friends of the Library have a revenue source um, that has to, uh, that, that pays for that. And uh, unless we make allowances for them uh, in the uh, shutdown plan, uh, that revenue stream would be shut off and uh, that's not a good thing. So I, I would uh, hope that we could be looking at that as well. Yeah, that's one of my questions anyway, since John brought it up. Um, what are your thoughts about Friends of the Library um, when we're in the shutdown mode? And I know you don't have the definitive answer right now. I just want to know what you're thinking. We, we don't have a definitive answer at this time, just as we don't know where staff are currently going to be ending up. Um, but for me and the rest of the leadership at the library and LSMS, we recognize the value of the Friends and how much they contribute, especially for the programming side. The reality is that we'll likely be toning down the types of programs that we can do. Um, for example, unless we find an alternative location for the concert series, it's very likely that we won't be able to host some concerts going forward, and that's a big contribution from the Friends. Uh, story times, thankfully, because they're staff-led, are easier for us to manage and continue with or without Friends funding. Of course, it's always enhancing, but those, because again, staff led and we have a lot more control over it, we might see a decrease in the number of attendance just because of where they might be able to be held. But I don't see that being particularly hit by the closure. Similar to our adult and teen programs, while a lot of the materials are funded, well, basically all the materials are funded by the friends, we do have kind of value saving options, doing more stuff with materials on hand that we purchase. We're scaling back either the number of programs for the adults and teens or changing the type of programs to be less resource intensive. So by that I mean less materials needed to be bought. So there's a lot of levers we can kind of manage and pull to make sure that we continue having programs. But the reality is it's not going to look the same as what we currently have. And I do anticipate some decrease in attendance um, during that time period. Oh, I also mentioned, as we plan for alternate locations for us as staff, we're of course going to be also considering whether we can have a small storefront for the friends or something similar. Again, it's really going to depend on the locations and then also whether, once we have locations, whether those will work for the friends. Because they might see the location we think works and they might say, no, that's not going to work. Uh, and then again, how we manage donations will also be something we're considering. We do have some options where we could continue donations and passing those along to the friends. But again, it depends. People get really comfortable with what they're used to, which is dropping off donations at their library. And if that changes, I wouldn't be surprised if some of the donation frequency or quantity also changes. That's a pretty thorough uh, analysis of that. Um, okay. What was mentioned in the report is uh, we wanted to uh, have a workshop, if you want to call it that, 
um, where there would be, uh, I guess, no more than two people from the board, or? I talked to, um, Robert, were you gonna talk to uh, Zach about that and uh, regarding the brand act and what we're allowed to do? Yeah, um, I did actually talk to Zach uh, about that, and it is possible for all of you to be present at that, um, to be a part of that, uh, that workshop. It would be publicly noticed so that everybody could attend. It is recommended that you host it at the library in the Turrentine room. Um, and there would be a specific structure, and uh, myself or one of the um, uh, city clerk staff will go over that with you, how that would work in advance of that meeting. Amazing. Okay, uh, I, I think we ought to, uh, to if, we, if it's possible to schedule that today, we should do it. Uh, so we can get a, a feeling from all three of the organizations who can potentially um, offer some funding uh, for the uh, unfunded items uh, to, uh, to ask questions and uh, potentially make um, uh, at least some uh, preliminary commitments, which of course we, we, we don't know what we don't know as to what the final numbers are going to be, uh, but at least we can get a uh, a, an outline of uh, who would like to do what and uh, what, if any, their, their limitations are um, financially or otherwise. And, uh, and we can just fine tune that going forward so that we can uh, all work together to, uh, to make this uh, renovation uh, work as best as it possibly can. I think we should all work together without a doubt. Um, I just had one more question in regards to the library facilities themselves. Um, I haven't seen in the paperwork or mentioned today about the Pioneer Room, but what would the plans be for that? So the plans for the Pioneer Room or historical collections, it will really depend on how much of Mathis Center is used for library services. And at least one I'm going to say draft idea for services. We are considering using the Pioneer Room as almost one of our main public spaces for the library. So a lot of the collections are currently there for uh, reference and non-circulating collections. Those will be stored, and those shelves will be used for circulating collections. So it's essentially repurposing the Mathis Center, which was in the 1950s, the library. We would be going backwards in time and reusing it as a library as much as we could. Um, so there are plans in place where we would use that space. Some of the collections that are already digitized remain. There would likely be continuing with our archivists having days or times when access to some of the materials are held discontinued. Um, but as far as the collections that are referenced in that front room, those would very likely have to be stored away. Um, because the reality is that those are not used nearly as much as any of the other circulating collections. Um, we cannot move the historical collections because those are in a time control space and there's not really better alternatives for those. Um, and we'll do as much as we can to put popular reference items, like if your books, in an area where we can still access them for the public. But a lot of that will be put away in order to have more active browsing collections, computer space, et cetera, in that building if possible. Thank you, Rena. Um, I think we'll, we'll get back to the workshop in just a moment. I just kind of wanted to open it for questions. Um, Trustee Reyes, would you like to ask any questions to anyone here? Yeah, um, mine's more of when the construction starts happening. Um, right now, the library is a current closing status, and would estimate to start would be right around when it would be summer. Um, do you know how, would we be locking ourselves off of that list, or would we be trying to have the Pioneer Room as the new temporary location uh, in the prop to do that? I'd say prop, prop or my house is great. I think that's a, that's a me question. Uh, that's an excellent question. and. Um, what we would be looking at is um, a variety of different options. Uh, if we were to use multiple facility spaces, we would potentially turn one of those spaces into a potential cold zone. 
So as Reno mentioned earlier, one of the draft plans might be utilizing the Pioneer Room. That could be an additional, uh, one of those locations in addition to another location that you might be using as one of those spots. Um, because uh, one of the other, as uh, Reno called it, draft plans is having multiple branch locations for the library. Robert, I would stay right there. Okay, not going anywhere. <laughs> um, since you're here, I have a question about, uh, you know, it was mentioned a couple times that the outside ADA path uh, may be picked up by the city as well as possibly electrical. Who, how does that process work? Who's following up and how does that happen? Good question, and I don't have all the specific answers to that right now. Uh, would need to follow up with uh, Joe Clark, who is the Director of Public Works, and that process would likely have to go through him and through the capital projects uh, program, which is housed in our engineering department. Okay. Um, that was all my questions that I already answered. Does anyone else have any more questions? Um, maybe just a comment. I think it would be worthwhile to invite the city councilors as well to our working group or, or workshop session. So they can see that, you know, everybody's very invested in making sure this is um, successful. I don't have to leave. <laughs> Sounds good. Um, one of the items that we would like to add to the agenda for next meeting is it was discussed and mentioned. Uh, to put on the agenda for recommendation that the city retain all the staff during the shutdown. You want to vote on that? I think you have to make, you have to make your agenda. Oh, no, but the reason. Okay, okay, got it. I understand. So we'll vote. Yes. Okay, good. And then do we need to vote to um, conduct this workshop? We have, a, we have an item for the meeting schedule, so you could do it, item three, if you wanted to add. Like, if you just wanted to talk about that, you can do it now. You can email if you guys don't have a date. The workshop's like an additional meeting, so it's kind of up to you guys. If you have a date in mind right now, we can. Oh, I guess that was my question is, Reno and Robert, do you guys, or even Ed, do you guys have an estimated time frame that it would be helpful to have this meeting? Like, would you have more information a month from now? Or is it just okay to have it now? Um, I, would, I would say in a month. Um, we're getting close to getting full, 100% design completion. Okay. So I would say in a month would be more, would make more sense. So like mid, by mid-October? Yes. Okay. Can we add um, can we add something to the agenda for next week regarding this? Sorry, yep. Uh, I wrote it down somewhere when Reno was talking about. Um, do you think Reno, you could have like a list of what we offer currently in the library and what what the team thinks will continue as is with the the shutdown? What will be reduced or? We can certainly come up with a list. Are you thinking of particularly like programs? Yeah. Or are you like collection wise? I, I would think like, I, I think we just need to get started thinking about uh, what does circulation look like? What are gonna be our priorities for circulation, for programming, stuff like that. I just think that as the board, we probably want to have kind of some involvement in, in what you guys decide to do, though obviously, um, you know, you coming up with the plan and what you think is, as professionals, would just be the basis for, for and we can just sign off on it. Sure, I, I know for what we currently offer, our annual report is coming out soon. Mm -hmm. So that'll be like a really, that's the standard kind of our baseline of what we did this last year. Yeah. And then we can work off of that to provide, say, what percentage do you think we can do as far as programs? Again, that's really gonna depend on the spaces okay. that, and that might not be decided for a while. Sure, okay. But we can provide some idea of what could be and you know what cannot be continued unless we find alternative solutions. Yeah, I don't know then if it's worthwhile to have it next month, but um, definitely something we want to kind of keep in mind as we go to be able to help influence, you know, where the priority should lie and what services to continue to provide at their full 
level um, versus what can be cut. Down, um, you know that that path. Since there may potentially be limited access to our full physical collection, has there been any thought about maybe ramping up our digital collection to make up for that? Wrapping up our digital collection is definitely one of the options. Um, what we're trying to do, at least with the plans as we develop them, is to use our data to make sure that we're keeping the most popular and circulating collection items. Keeping in mind also that we'll continue to purchase new items, and new items are some of the most popular materials that go out regardless. Um, but keeping that in mind, there will be some gaps. You know, like we won't be able to buy as much because we won't have as much space to put it anywhere. Uh, and so that's where we're going to turn to enhance our digital collections. Um, so that'll depend on how much collection space we have. Then we can do some math to figure out how many items we can buy during that closure period and whether or not that will work with the budget. We also, the other thing that is that the construction is going to overlap over the school years, and so that's when our collection budget is also going to refreshed. So, midway, so around the end of June of next year, right, is when the end of our collection budget ends. And so, by that time, we would have had of months closure, so we'll be better able to gauge any changes for the next fiscal year. And that might be a time where we greatly increase the digital collection budgets, at least temporarily, to make sure we continue to have access to some of the more popular on-demand items. Um, beyond that, it also be also trying to balance out the fact that when we reopen, it's going to be part of that same fiscal year, very likely. And we're gonna to have to treat the reopening as almost an opening day collection, so brand new items would be a nice priority to get. So there might also be some options where we buy items for that opening day, reopening day, uh, so that we get a lot more new items to get people excited to come back in and really re-engage with the library after the first month's closure. Got it, and I think um, my ask would be that we start, I know, these, are, these meetings are available to the public and so are the agendas. Um, but really, I think we need to start sitting down at this meeting of a potential closure. Um, because if any community hears about it after the fact, maybe take it negatively. Um, I think in the media releases, um, we, we need to strategize a way of how we communicate to that. To go off that question as well, um, with the Building for Library Infrastructure Grant Program, do we know if what we're attempting to do in Escondido is unprecedented with this grant program, involving shutting down the library potentially for a period of time, or if other cities done the same thing and we looked into that? Um, if there's any anything to reference there from like a research standpoint that maybe we can learn from other cities, I, I can speak to the grant in general terms. Um, overall, there are a lot of libraries that receive the funding. Um, this was round one funding, the one we received the funding for. There was round two. Luckily, we were round one because a lot of the round two funding libraries were cut out due to state budget issues. Um, so one, we're very thankful that we still have money. Um, two, there are a lot of libraries that, you know, depending on what the overall need is, you might have to close. That is just how it works. Um, each location is unique, just like each library is unique. So their circumstances might vary wildly, and without knowing the details, it's hard to say necessarily whether we could even be comparing apples to apples, uh, even if it was a similar size location with a similar grant. Uh, just because when that was constructed, how it was constructed, where it was constructed, all those variables made it really difficult to compare likes for likes in these types of situations. Um, but we can certainly try to reach out to some of the libraries to see, for example, on my end, figure out how they transported or stored their items, things like that. But beyond that, it's hard to say how much would be comparable. Thank you, Rena. Didn't mean to put you on the spot with that one. I 
had one, but it disappeared. Well, I'll, I'll ask our questions, so that will give you time to remember. OK. <laughs> Uh, so our next item is we're talking about our meeting dates for the rest of the year, but before we move on to that, um, we have our October board meeting uh, on October 10th, okay. and uh, we just talked about hosting the workshop around mid-October, so I don't really see an issue, and I guess I'm just asking for confirmation for you guys, having a board meeting as normal with, this, with an update like we're doing today, and then having the workshop a week later. Any issues with that timing? From a uh, uh, from a meeting standpoint, there is no no issues. It's, uh, you can meet as often as you deem necessary to do so. Um, now, from a staffing standpoint and putting together the logistics of the meeting, I would defer to you know. Okay. Were we thinking the same weekday, or do we have a date in mind? Uh, well, we'll we'll check with your schedule when we move on to the next agenda item. So it's just getting ready <laughs> and prepping us for those questions. Um, and then also, let's see, it was oh, and then do, would we need to vote on or I just wanted to, for the future agenda item that you mentioned oh. for the other. I just need a second person to want to vote on the. Oh, it's the agenda. The agenda, you need to. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, let's see. So for the get it back. Okay. Uh, I, I, it was mine. Mine was more of a comment than a question. Um, to build on what uh, Maribel said, um, it would probably, from my perspective, be better to not um, go officially out to the public and give them a schedule until we know a lot more. Probably December. At the earliest, I would think. That's just my thought. I, I would defer to Ed, but I would agree with you. Um, my um, my collaboration with our communications team at the city indicates generally that until we have much more definitive dates of what that looks like, that's when you would go out to the public. Because otherwise, you start creating um, this challenge where people are starting to see, oh, the library's closed. Is it closed now? And the reality is, no, we're just we're letting you know it's not going to be closed until six months from now. So until we actually have those dates much more firmed up, that's when we would want to start making that communication with the public. At that same time, we would also want to start referring to what our plan is to mitigate the closure of the library with alternatives where they would still be able to receive those resources that is provided by the library. And we should be much more prepared at that time to be able to define that. Makes, makes perfect sense. Thank you. OK, last question. Sorry, bouncing back. For the workshops, are we thinking one workshop or a multiple series of workshops? Multiple. OK. I just wanted to get practice yeah. on that. OK, sounds good. All right. Well, thank you. Just one more question. So for the workshop, right, um, it, there's a lot that we could discuss. Um, Reno, do you think it would be worthwhile to have someone from LSNS come in and help facilitate that discussion for us? Or, I mean, I guess would. I mean, I could be there. Yeah, right, okay. Um, I just think maybe we can set an agenda for that workshop um, so that we're all understanding what we need to tackle in that time and then put, you know, five minutes on the agenda to discuss what the future topics will be. Okay, so maybe we should invite uh friends and the Library Foundation to participate in constructing that agenda. Okay. So the workshop's going to have to roll out just like a regular meeting agenda. So whenever you guys know what you want to do and what you want to put on it, make sure you give it to Reno because there's going to have to be the regular standardized sure. agenda and everything. Okay. And then we'll post it. And then just to note, if you want to have multiple, I would recommend having those, you know, placed out in advance so yeah. that you can at least, you know, all public Well, I think to start, uh, since it's going to happen really quickly, more information is going to come by the end of the year. Are we comfortable setting October, November, December workshops once a month for the next three months? You can also do a workshop item just to make that. It's like at the council, and they'll have a separate workshop item within the meeting. So you don't have to do a whole separate meeting. Just because you guys meet on a regular basis, we have three more months till the year's over. Just throwing that out there. It's completely up to you guys. 
So we can, part of our meeting here could be a workshop at the end. Okay, and we can have the, we can freely speak. <laughs> yeah, it's like a workshop <laughs> item. Yeah, for you, like for the council's public hearing, they'll have a workshop, and the workshop will have a specific item. Okay, okay. so it's still agendized and everything. Mm -hmm. You don't have to do it that way. Okay. I'm just suggesting it if well, you don't want to come twice a month or. I would think that having the first one in the, in, at the library would be a, a good thing. And then we can uh, just see how that works and if it makes sense to bring it to this venue or not. Um, I thought it had to be at the library. The it does not have to. Oh, it does not have to. It does not have to be at the library. It can, it can be here at City Hall in the Mitchell Room. It can be here in Council Chambers. I wouldn't recommend here in Council Chambers for that because this is a much more formal setup that is designed for a public meeting, whereas a workshop you want to be much more interactive. So you want it to be a, a good size room, especially depending on the number of um, organizations or, and or individuals that will be in attendance. Can we just have our normal meeting here and then tag on the workshop at the library right after? Same day. Okay, we'll talk about that at the agenda item Okay, uh, I think we're, are we leaving for the topic right now? <laughs> okay, thank you, Ed, Robert, you know, really appreciate the uh, information today. Thank you. Okay, we're moving on to item number three, 2025 board meeting schedule, and we're also adding the workshop um, date to this. So, the, tr oh, I'm, go I'm sorry, go ahead, you know. Okay. Item. There was a lot of material. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So these are the proposed meeting dates and times for next year. Board is, of course, welcome to make any changes, adjustments, let us know what you think that we needed, and I believe Robert also has a comment. Thank you. Um, I did, uh, in my course of my conversations with the city clerk's office, specifically with uh, Zach Beck, um, he did indicate that, um, obviously, I was not here when you established the 6 o'clock meeting time to adjust for one of the other um, commissions that was present. Um, and it was uh, his understanding that he relayed to me that it was designed to see if you would be receiving additional attendance in the audience to ensure that people were um, uh, coming and listening and, and participating in this particular process. Uh, he did indicate that um, based on the data, it does not appear that that has bared out. And so he does have a recommendation and unfortunately did not get into this particular report. And that recommendation is instead of going to six o'clock, we would prefer to go to one o'clock in the afternoon. The reason for that is it's less of a burden on staff um, so that um, uh, the city clerk's office, um, Reno, uh, myself, and a couple of other staff members that will be participating in these would not have to be staying um, later into the evening. But again, that is entirely your discretion about how you want to do it, as, um, uh, as Reno indicated earlier. But that is um, his recommendation, is to move those time slots from 6, actually, to 1 o'clock. OK, I, I do want to follow up on that. that that's all um, correct, except for I do want to add that my suggestion with moving to a later time slot was because uh, we are we, yeah, we are working professionals, and we were trying to attract more working professionals to join the board uh, this, this past year and in the future. So it would be helpful to have more people have the ability to join the meeting at the end of their workday. Absolutely. And, and again, that is just a staff recommendation. You are still the, um, the, the board, and you have the, the ability to be able to set those meetings. So again, that is just a recommendation. Okay, thank you. Who is, uh, is, do we have any board members retiring to the meeting? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's you, John. Okay, 
So my recommendation is to keep that into consideration still, um, whether Carolyn and John join again. I hope, I hope that's the case, but then also we are going to have an open application process. So if we want to keep that uh, for working professionals, that might attract them when it's at the end of their work day. I, I think too with the everything that's coming up uh, starting in March, right, and the potential closure and everything, I think keeping later times would be more beneficial to folks who might have concerns with, with how the, the um, renovation project is going. Um, so I would be a proponent of keeping it at this four or six times. Okay. Any other comments? Okay. Um, Although we don't receive the turnout that we would love to, to get in your meetings, um, I think that that's always the goal you know, with the upcoming renovation. If the community you know, does want to provide input, uh, there will be those meetings where they need it. Yeah, I, I don't work, at least not uh, on a regular basis. So uh, I'll just. I, I know, but uh, yeah, I can quit anytime I want. Uh, I, I defer to your judgment as far as on the meeting sheet. Okay, so I think we do want to add the workshop, and we're going to do middle of October. Um, Reno, I think we would defer to you because we need you. <laughs> um, so what what does what data would you like to suggest from the little October? So I was, what we discussed in looking at what the trend team looks like in October. Now, the good and the bad is that Thursdays in the trend team room are very busy. Uh, it's one of our busier activity days in the evening. It, it's, I can't say right now, the, the first op clearly open afternoon wasn't until October 30th and the 31st. Um, that was just me scanning everything else as an activity book during the times when we would be looking to hold the workshops. Now, I did not look at what, say for example, the math is set classroom, but I also know that those have evening classes, uh, at least the dance studio does. And I have to take a look to see what the classroom looks like. Um, and I can get an email out to you maybe by next week, but I don't have that information right now for you. Well, we might be over optimistic as to how many people are going to come. Oh. Halloween's the thirty-first. Yeah, that's no, that's no way. Um, I will mention that Robert mentioned that there are options for meeting, perhaps out of this room, but the Mitchell room, for example. So there's a number of options. I just don't know exactly what days would be. Okay. Do you want to just approve this or make a motion to approve the 2025 schedule and then I'll note that you're going to send out the email with the dates for the workshops? That sounds good. Okay. Thank you. I need a yeah. Yeah. motion to approve the 2025 schedule. Okay, and so for the workshop, Reno, will you be the point of contact, or do you need us, who do you need to lead that? As far as booking the space? Um, as far as coordinating, inviting community members, um, agenda, creating the agenda, and things like that. I would defer to you, the board, as far as creating the agenda. I'm happy to, once that has been created, to okay. post it the way I regularly do. I think I would say it would work similarly to how I asked for agenda okay. items. I would just be asking for a more complete agenda. Okay. Um, I, I that was approved five zero. Oh, thank you. <laughs> um, so let me ask Reno that. Do you do? Would you like me to collect the agenda items from the friends and the um, foundation as well? That might be best. Okay. I think that would probably be the best course of action. I think that way. They can ask questions of you and kind of you can coordinate, and I can help coordinate on the side of the city and as far as the rooms with the agenda. Okay, sounds good. So I'll work, I'll be the 
lead on creating the agenda and working with individuals. Okay. Got it. Thank you. Okay, we're moving on to item number four. All right, lovely statistics. I won't spend too long here. Uh, did anybody have any questions about the statistics for July, which was the end of the fiscal year? And as I mentioned, into that, we are working on our annual reports. How about some detail on wireless sessions? The, the drop from 30,000 to 11,000? I don't have a reason for that. Um, the wireless, I'll have to admit, has seemed more spotty, and that I can't quite sure why it's been fluctuating so much. Um, July, as far as the other metrics are concerned, was fairly consistent. Um, we received the Wi-Fi reports from City IT, um, and so we can gain a little bit more information by asking them, but it's hard to say whether that might be a technical issue or whether it is that people are just coming with less cell phones or computers. It's really hard to say specifically what is happening there. I just have a question about the number of website visits. Um, maybe this is for a future meeting too, uh, but with the new website up and running, have we seen higher visits compared to the past or lower? Or is the new website helping uh, drive more traffic, essentially, is my question. From what I've seen, at least since the switchover, there hasn't been too much change as far as once we started getting those new numbers, what that's been. Since then, it's been around uh, 9, 10,000 user sessions per month. Um, I do have slightly less access to the metrics. The city has access to my sending a report. Um, if we wanted to really delve deeper into like a month by month or figure out what's happening to compare it differently, we would have to work with the city's IT team to really figure out what has happened. And that would take a bit of work and a little bit of effort to get you that kind of report. Yeah, not urgent. I'm just thinking also in a future where we'll have to rely more on communications online, uh, just making sure we're maximizing the website as much as possible. When was the Hoopla um, decrease going to happen? So Hoopla has gone live as far as the policy change. Um, so we are now down to three borrows per month and a budget cap per day. The budget cap so far has been the one that's been affecting the most people. That has been we'll get a notification saying, your library has reached its daily limit. Please try again tomorrow. Uh, our staff have informed me they've been fielding phone questions about that and also emails. I've seen the emails for sure about that. Uh, we're encouraging them to use the alternate, which is Libby Overdrive. Um, we also are sharing on our social media and inside the library that Google offers free ROs uh, at the end of the month. So the last week of each month, um, they have a selection of items that don't count towards any of the caps. So we are trying to promote that as an alternative. It is a little bit more limited than what the full the offerings are, but at least gives them a selection of items that don't count towards any of those caps. So it gives them more of an opportunity to continue to use Google the way they have been using it. Um, but yes, the reality is that people are starting to feel the pain of the reduction of Google, and we're doing our best to redirect them to our other resources as best we can. For the strategic plan, I'll just very quickly, this is an update within um, the last quarter is when we did the, the last community hub local connector. Uh, nothing much has changed. We continue to work on 
elements of the strategic plan, as you see here on screen and in your reports. Um, overall, we continue to push our staff, especially to leverage more and new partnerships out in the community. Um, we've really been trying to emphasize outreach and outreach from not just a traditional youth services team, but also from our adult services or pioneer room staff. We're also going out to the community. Our literacy staff, of course, are also out there promoting both our literacy program and other programs for the library. Um, the new website is one of the points on here. Uh, we are continuously looking at evaluating the website and making updates as we can. We don't have a dedicated web developer or webmaster. Um, I act as our webmaster. Um, and so as I train staff to work on the website, we'll have more and more. But I'll be honest, I have not as much time to train staff as I've been doing a lot of webmastering myself. Um, beyond that, we're all very proud of our diverse cultural initiatives, and we're looking forward to more this next quarter uh, with our Dia de los Muertos, uh, all those festivities around that, um, in October, of course, and then moving on into the holiday seasons of November and December. I know we have uh, in October, November, the Dia de los Muertos coming up. Do we have access to reports for that? Yes, you can start getting some preview. I think our online calendar might already have some items posted for October, and the October calendar will be coming up. We should be having the same types of celebrations as we did last year, uh, and we're really trying to leverage some of our new story times that I'll talk about a little bit in my breakfast report, but trying to include more of that in the cultural diversity and trying to add more elements of our Spanish language collections, for example, and these four programs. Will, will the library be at Grape Day Festival this weekend? Yes, we have a number of staff that will be there, so you'll find a table for the library there during Grape Day. Awesome. Thank you. I'm sorry I didn't check the calendar for September. Is there a Hispanic heritage uh, recognition for this month? We will have a display, I uh, believe, at the front of the library, and I don't remember off the top of my head whether we have any special programs, but typically we'll do some sort of recognition, either as a theme or something, in our story times and a lot of our other age specific programs, recognizing the Spanish Heritage Month, uh, starts in September and ends in October. Thank you. Thank you. Did anybody have any questions about the Library of Corrections report? And I'll, I'll mention a couple of items. Um, tomorrow will be off the library will be closed for scrap, our annual staff training day. Um, and then I've got two grant updates. The LSTA Play for All grant, we've begun purchases for that, and soon the public will be able to start kind of reaping the benefits of the grant in the form of new program tools, toys, manipulatives to be incorporated into our programs. And then right now we're just waiting on some of the bigger ticket items, quotes from vendors. Um, one of the questions might have is, why are we going to be closing in a couple months? Well, we had to find funds for enhanced the second floor, and this is one of the better options. So we're doing the best we can to buy what we can now before we close, and then store it once we do close. Um, so we're aware of that, but the majority of the items will be easily enough to either move uh, or store away. Um, but the majority we want to keep out and keep using in programs regardless of where we end up. Um, the other grant we are currently looking at is very much in its infancy, and that is a countywide digital equity grant that is being funded through the federal government. That'll be a regional initiative. Um, so far, there's not much to update other than the fact that it exists and that the county is trying to present it as a regional effort with municipalities, nonprofits, and other organizations working in partnership to apply and it's all being coordinated at the county level. 
So we are continuing to advise, participate. Um, we don't have anything as far as what the dollar amount will be or necessarily what we at the city and library will be receiving. We have put in some requests as far as additional equipment we would need to help facilitate computer classes in the future. But again, it's very much still in the infancy, but the whole goal is to provide better access to online resources, Wi-Fi, computers, and really bridge the digital divide, as it's called, in the San Diego community. Um, I personally believe we have a pretty good chance of receiving the grant, just because the region as a whole hits a lot of the metrics that the grant is trying to reach, which is certain underserved populations, especially micro-populations, non-English-speaking populations, and tribal populations. And we have all three of those here in San Diego. And so I think there's very good odds that the county and us will result in some support through this grant. And then I won't go into all the service highlights, but does anybody have any questions, comments about anything in the rest of the report? Congratulations on the, receiving the grant. And I really appreciate you always putting us out there for the possibilities. Any other questions or comments? So recently, uh, my family and I went up to Monterey uh, for vacation and we stopped by their library. And it was interesting to see how they have their layout. Um, it, is, it is a small space. Um, it's kind of a corner building. Uh, but some of the notable things that I saw is um, to help parents who may need access to access the computer libraries. They have desks that have like, a built-in um, baby gate enclosure. Um, so those were pretty interesting. I did see a parent with you know the young toddler laying in that enclosure and I thought that was pretty neat to help support parents um, that need access to computers. Um, so maybe that's some food for thought for that grant. Um, very interesting that we have friends. Um, I did notice that they have a corner in their library. Um, they had a, a friends bookshop similar to ours. Um, it was a smaller space uh, but it was not manned in that they had a um, little signage where you kind of a corner system, you take the book and you just send the Venmo or PayPal um, for whatever the amount of the book was. Uh, so I think that was a pretty interesting uh, system of doing it. It was um, right in front of the library. Um, so yeah, so I really enjoyed um, seeing the library system. They did have more interactive um, elements to their children's uh, area, the shelving, um, lower, was colorful on the edges. Um, they had like puzzles um, so that they took advantage of the shelving space itself. I think my, my wife uh, doesn't miss a week where she stops by the friend's bookstore at least once. Uh, she buys a lot of children's books. She buys uh, those written in Spanish and takes those down to Mexico to local grade school. And she finds books she thinks our four-year-old granddaughters would like. And uh, she bought one the, yesterday or tried to buy it. And apparently there's a program that friends have. They have a, uh, a donor, a sponsor, who will reimburse them for every children's book um, that is sold. And apparently they just send him the bill and he pays it every month. I thought that's a really nice thing to do. Um, so I went to the second Saturday concert um, for Waters, and it was pretty good attendance, and, and we enjoyed that concert. And so while I was there, I went down to the Friends bookstore. It's funny, we all have Friends stories today. And I did some shopping, but I was a little bit stressed while I was in there because I, I didn't have cash. But then they took cards, so I was super happy, and it worked out, and, and I was able to use my card. So. Yeah, that's new. So you have to spend at least five dollars. But I, I, I was like, no problem. I can use my card. So thank you. I want to thank everyone in attendance tonight. It's great to see everyone. Um, and then, 
last month I reported about the chess club and it being on my kids' radar. Well, they've now attended the chess club and they absolutely loved it. So thank you for arranging that and hopefully they continue to play and develop a love for chess. Reno, do we have a succulent swap on the calendar for September? I couldn't find it. I've been like looking for it. I'll have to double check. I, I know it's not every month. Okay. Um, we might be taking a break, but I can confirm that. Okay. So I checked out um, a book from the library on um, building succulent wreaths. Uh, so I have all of the materials now, um, except for the succulents. So that's why I want to go to the succulent swap. So I can then build my wreath. Yeah. That's it for me. <laughs> so great. Well, thank you everyone for coming today. And